Daryl. Sean. It's, it, it's here. This is the week. We've been talking about this for a minute. Since, Since the pregame show. Pregame show back in August. Non-conference schedule. Yep. Conference schedule. Yep. Playoffs. Regional championship games. And but this is get, what you started to spring for. Yeah, yeah. State championships. State championships. And who's been putting in that work? That was the mantra that we had for this show. All spring, all summer. All spring, who's been putting in that work? And we got some teams. Eight teams are eight left. Eight teams are left that have been putting in that work. But before we can talk about these eight teams, Sean, we got to do a recap. Got to do a recap. Got to give a shout out to the town of Nashville, Parson yep. Ray. <laughs> letting us record this week. We couldn't get to the field on yep. Sunday. I had some complications. I couldn't yep. make it out there. We're going to go to Studio 67, but our time's kind of off of what yep. they could do, so we'll be in Studio 67 next week. Yep. But hey, Town of Nashville, you know what they say? Come on, Big Grind. Come on. We want the Big Grind down here in Nashville this week, <laughs> so we are in the town building down here at the Rec Center. Big game we had last Friday yeah, night. We were there. Yep, yeah, we was there. 71st. Yeah. You said it since we first started talking about it. Yeah. Big time football. It is big time football down that way, and um, they showed up. Um, oh, 71st oh, they, got oh, some ballers. They, I mean, you, you said we yeah. talked about the quarterback. Nance was one of the guys that all we said look out for. All over the field. All over the field. He was doing and Lucas boy. Quarterback. Defense, Lucas. I defense, mean, they the got the name so much that I thought I was on the field one time. Yeah, yeah. His name was called He's out a lot. The running back down there? Yeah. And, I mean, it was a 71st team that we said it on the pre-show down there in Fayetteville, that this team had been waiting 364 days yeah. for this one game. 364 days. That's a whole county. And probably some extra days. And, and that's what I was going to say. Probably extra days. But then they had the uh, – they, they, from what we heard. Now, we don't know how true this is, but they had a little night. They had some motivation. They had, motivation. They had a little motivation. They had a little night there. logo or something going on in the locker room. To remind them what they had motivation. Yeah, so. It was a good game. It was a good game. And Northern Nash came out to play, and they jumped on them early. Yes. And if you were the Knights, that's what you want to do. Jump on them early. They're at their house. Right. Take their crowd out of the game. Yeah. But you said it best. I got to give a shout-out to my guys over at LBJ Chevrolet because they came to me on Saturday and Sunday. I got phone calls, and they said, Daryl said it best. He said there was three guys on this team that's explosive. Yeah. That at any given moment, they can hit that sideline and break one of the middle for a touchdown. And that was it. That's yeah. what we saw. And after that, you started seeing the difference between a team that's been on four road games right. and the team that's been four home games. That's it. And that's one of the things that we was talking about on uh, last Friday. Right. Was that it's hard to go on the road. First of all, you done played two games on the road. One of the games that you played was your hometown rock. Then you go to Scotland. And you another play hard game. another hard game. Then, then you go to Havelock. Havelock, another, another game. hard game. Now so, after all that, now yeah. you got to go to 71st right. and duplicate what you've done in those three previous games in a regional championship to get to a state championship. Yeah. It's hard. It's very hard. But so. if you're Northern Nash, I want to tell the Knights, you didn't get to the back to the state championship. But this is something – Four, five, ten years down the road, when you look back on this season, right. you can say, we only lost two games yeah. to our rival for the Greek Grind Ash Game Championship, mm -hmm. Southern and Southern. But then you look, two weeks after that, we yeah. went back to Southern and won. And won. To then continue we continue playing the playoffs. And continue playing the playoffs. And then we won some good playoff games on the road. And I'm telling you, a lot of these teams nights that you beat on the road, a lot of these teams were looking like we're at home, we should win. You went right. to Scotland and won. Yeah. Havelock and won. Havelock. Southern and won. Yeah. This was a monumental season, monument season for the Knights to be able to do, to accomplish that. Yeah. I don't know that yeah. many teams that made that deep a run in the playoffs having to go on the road yeah. to do it. And playing good teams. Just boy, you said the good key word right there. Good team. Good team. Southern A. Yeah. Conference champs. Scotland. Good team. Conference champs. Good team. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Have like number right. one no, seed. Number one seed. Conference champ. So, it's something for the Knights to look back on four or five years and say, that season right there, that was something special. Definitely something special. Okay. Got another game, Darren. Got another game. I can't. Hey, hey, grit and grind fans. <laughs> I'm going to give, I'm, I'm give Darren a tie out. I can't. You see how he was trying to <laughs> get in these games. We, we, no, you're right, though. Yeah. We got some games. We got some games. But we I got, got more games. Cool. I got no, no. I, I couldn't let I, somebody yeah, from Tarboro call me and tonight. said, whatever you do, Sean, yeah. you make sure you spend five seconds yeah. 
<laughs> it was just five seconds. Cause yeah. I know y'all got a lot to come. Talk about this talk room now. Yeah, I got it. You, bro. Well, well, first of all, yeah. like me and Daryl said during the game, during the seventh first game, we was keeping up with the Tarver and the Clinton game. Daryl said they had, they got good running backs on West Columbia. Yeah, that's not a bad team. No, not a bad team at all. I mean, this team pretty much be a very good Wilson Prep team. Yeah, that was called Chaps. Daryl saw something that little boy. He said this team they get on the sideline. He said they, yeah, they, they put points on the board. They could. But Tarboro jumped on that gatekeeper. But and I think what I have done, and I'm saying this for Tarboro <laughs> and Clinton fans, I think I gave y'all that extra motivation well, like to that. get refocused I like on that. both of these games since I picked against y'all in that last week's show. But only on the green ground <laughs> one of us can give you motivation. See, you can't get this nowhere else. No, you can't get the motivation. But we, I gave y'all a little motivation. You did that, yeah. And boy, they, boy, they cut on the guys on both of those. Yeah, guys. yeah, they Shut did. The door. Clinton, but, shut the door. Shut the door. Clint took we'll, care of business. We're talking about the bubble. Yes, we're going to definitely talk about it. All right, Sean. So what we're going to do this show is break down the four games. We got four games left. Yeah. And you know, this time of the season where we, me and Darren, we get to the point where we start seeing the season coming to an end. Yeah. Shows coming to an end. And, you know, we have these last four games that we break down. Because we want to cover all four. Last year we just covered the teams. There was an irony, maybe. Right. But we said this year, let's break down all four because we do have two teams in our coverage area that did make it. Right, correct. And we're going to give the other two games a shout out. Well, well, no. I said two. Yeah. Got three. Got three. I forgot we beat up another one. What was that? Welcome to the show, 71st. 71st. <laughs> Welcome to the show. <laughs> I'm not about them, but the Falcon fans are upset right now. Because yeah. they said they want to be a part of the Greek grind. Yeah, that's what they said. So Friday we got night. three teams that are made. Yeah. So we're going to talk about these four games. But Darryl, our first one will be 4A football. Yeah. 14 and 1 Hogarth Vikings versus the 13 and 2 Weddington Warriors. Right now, we don't know who got the road on the whole team. Both of them going to yeah. play on neutral field. Neutral field. I got the East this week. Yep. You got the West, right? I got the West. I'm going to take the East in this game. Okay. East go first. I got Hogarth Vikings coming out of Wilmington, North Carolina. Hogarth's only loss. Now, won't y'all listen to this Green Grind fans of 4A football? The only loss comes week one. Of this season. So after week one, that lost to Cleveland, they just been on the winning streak. Yeah. They lost against Cleveland in Wilmington 28 20. But after that, they're listen to these teams they beat Wallace Rose here. At the Dog Pound. You know, they call this some Dog Pound. Mm-hmm. Too. Well, you know, the original Dog Pound was. Yeah. Right there, okay. Right down the street. Down the street. Yeah, right down the street. Right down the street. They beat Wallace Rose here at the Dog Pound. J.H. Rose. North Brunswick, 52-0. Langley, 49-15. I remember that Langley score. I'm going to come yeah. back to that. Then after they beat North Brunswick, they said, let's go to West Brunswick. Beat them 44-7. Then they went to Ashley, 38-6. Thompson, 45-0. Then they said, let's go to South Brunswick. So they went all over Brunswick County. <laughs> you know, they went Northwest and South and beat them 56-0 because South Brunswick said, come on the players. Mm-hmm. That's where we coming. Then they went and beat New Hanover in their own county, 44-7. Round one, Chapel Hill, 52-0. Chapel mm-hmm. Hill, a good team. Jordan, now you tell me about You talked about Jordan a lot early in the season. Uh, yeah. That's a good program. Definitely. 39-16. Now, we said they beat Langley in the season, 49-15. Third round of the playoffs beat Langley, 43-10. Mm. Now, here's the two things that stick out about this team right here. They had to go to Cleveland. And everybody knows. We've been talking about Cleveland. Yeah, we were talking about Cleveland season. a couple weeks ago. They have been the hottest the team. Yeah. Since the season of the playoffs, they just can't find the right time. They went in Cleveland and beat Cleveland 51 35. Mm. And they eventually lost from week one of 28 20. Round four. I picked them to lose this game. And they're a good team. Mm-hmm. They had to go to Raleigh, North Carolina and play the power. Now, you just beat one powerhouse right. team up there around the triangle. You had now go back and play another powerhouse team. Because I say this now, you know, that's big time football. Yeah. Call them Gibby. Oh, yeah. The Crusaders. Yeah. Stayed right across the street with PNC. Mm-hmm. They saw all of that. Came down for it and went by PNC. Yeah. Seen how the state of sit on here. Went in Cardinal Gibbs and beat them 41 20. It's a good team. That's what I'm going to say. It's a good Carson team. It's a good team. That's a good brand of yeah. that, That's the standard boy football. Right. It starts with Bellamy, Joseph Fontaine, Turner Well. Keep your eyes on them, you will. Tell them, you, keep your eyes on these guys. But they can put up points. They can run the ball. You got a zero session of raw receiver, Blake Edwards, Mitchell. And this starts that quarterback, Hudson Willingham. This is a good team. Their defense. 
They got Reagan Pentry, Rylan, Rylan Edwards, Kamar Fulton, Makila, Makala, Mac Malaga, I'm just calling Malaga West. And they're coached by Craig Underwood. Yeah. This is a good team. Definitely a good team. They beat some good te good teams to get here. Yeah. And when you're at the state championship, you have done everything right from day one of Spring right. OTA to make it here. And to do everything right, and we were just talking about this, we talked about this on Friday, to do everything right starts in that classroom. That's a These team. teams knew that these players knew, okay, for me to stay on this team, I, I got to stay in, in the books. books. And that's where it started, in the classroom. Box. And that's the first check spot. Because like you always say, coach can't use you. He can't use you sitting in the stand. Or the, mom and dad. Yeah, or the concession stand yeah. trying to buy a hot dog. Yeah. That's right. He needs you, he on, needs the you on the field dressed ready to go. And the only way you can do that is by doing what you got to do in the classroom. So all these teams have done that to get to this point. But let's talk about this Weddington Warriors team out of okay. Matthew, North Carolina. Like you said, they're 13-2. Last season, they was in the regional round finals against Crimsley, lost 28-27. to This game, would if they would have won this good, game. Grimsley's a good football team. A good football team. They would have won two state championships last year, but they lost by one point. But this year in the playoffs, they beat some great teams. They beat Providence 42-7, Chambers 14-10, uh, Charlotte Catholic, 37 to 7. Grimsley, again, played them 44 to 27. And then last week they played Independence and won 34 to 14. Big team out of Charlotte. Big time team. And for them, their key players is their quarterback, number 12, Tyler Bug. Thrown for over 3,000 yards. That is the key for them in this game right here is that quarterback play. Um, running back, they got Nick Diamond. Um, running back, uh, Brady Ritt Ritter, a good player. And then wide receiver, you got Keon Jackson, 1,600 yards receiving. Say it again. 1,600 yards receiving. So, so the combination of Tyler and Jackson, quarterback, wide receiver, they on point. They on, They know what they're doing out there on the field. This is a good team. A good team. Defense-wise, you got Anthony Harris, uh, Neely. So those are some of the guys that stood out for me on this squad. And the Warriors are ready. Um, like I said, last year, there was one game away. One half away. One half away from being in the state championship. And this year, they made it and played some good teams to get there. So, we got to pick on this game. I got to pick on that one. But we got to wait. I'm going to say it. Got to say Five minutes quick. Please. Five minutes. So, let's go to 3A. I got to hit the 3A. Our newest team in the Grit and Grind family, the Bibles of 71st. Yeah. Welcome to the Grit and Grind. We'll be bringing more of you next season, even though you came on later in the yeah. season. But next season, we'll definitely be giving you more, more, you know, more games. We'll be talking about breaking your games down as our season progresses in 2024. 15-0, undefeated, versus the 15-0 Hickory Red Tornadoes. Yeah. I got these. You got these. You got the wins. You want to yeah. go first? Or time? I go first. Okay. All right. Like you said, the Hickory Tornadoes are coming to this game 15 and 0, 7 and 0. <laughs> and what I like about this team, because last season, this team was only 7 and 4 and 5 and 2 in the conference. So they, found, they figured something out. They figured something out because they lost last year in the playoffs to South Point 48 to 13. But they figured something out. They figured something out. And they got refocused. And this team said, you know what? Forget about last year. This is the new year. Throw it in the past. Throw it in the past. Let's do that day. Oh, you burned that. <laughs> and that's what this team did. Playoff-wise, they played Hus, won 51-32. Uh, North Lincoln beat them 48-28. Uh, AC Reynolds, 61-38. That was a good team. Good team. West Henderson, 28-16. And Dudley last week, which was a close game. Very close. They won 42-41. Coach, Coach Joe got them focused. Got them focused. And their key player is number 10 quarterback, Brady Stover. Hope I pronounced that last name right. 3,700 yards, 47 TDs for the season. That's Western Carolina football yep. at his body. And he's got some wide receivers he's throwing the ball to. He's got uh, Little, who's got over 1,300 yards. Then you got Mevlin and then uh, Johnson, number six. So he's got some playmakers at wide receiver. Defense-wise, key players that I saw on tape, again, was Woods, Williams, uh, number 27, Williams, number seven, Woods, and number 50, Pips. Those guys play good, sound defense, and that's what you want to be able to do. And this is a championship caliber team right here. They're focused. They are focused. 15-0, 7-0 in the conference. And the thing, and like I said, I can't keep going. I got to keep going back to last season. 
Zach could have looked at that record and said, you know what? Last that's a year good we season. Was, yeah, we were 74. That's a good season yeah. for a lot of teams. But they said, you know, that's not good enough for us. We want to be better. They got and they got refocused and did what they had to do. They sent them 15 and 0, giving a play in the state championship game. They got a tough game this Friday night. Yeah. That game on Friday, if you're not aware, at 7 p.m. at UNC. They got a tough game because they got a team that we saw last Friday yeah. night in Fayetteville. Now, I'm going to go with some stuff from that game, and then I'm going to talk about where we're going to this game. 71st last week on Northern Nash, powerhouse team in 3 right. football in this area, brand name, put up 348 rushing Ooh. yards. 104 yards passing, and this team, as a defense hole, had 86 towels. Mm. So that means you were covering the field on all aspects. Yes. Sideline, sideline. Sideline, sideline, but it starts with number, number 11. You said it last week. Mm. DeAndre Nance. Yeah. I see him live in the living cup. If he sees daylight, he go. He go. Number nine, Donovan Fredericks. Jason Franklin, the sophomore. Mm -hmm. Then you got the wide receiver we seen White, Jatavius White, Amari Drummond. They can, man, this team there, we saw on Friday night. They can run it down your throat, yeah. or they can go in that spray and throw it at you. But this is what stuck out to me, special teams. Every time that yeah. ball was kicked out, yeah. on every kick out position, when Northern got the ball, you always heard one name going to make a tackle. Kayla Lucas. Lucas. He got to be kind to us. He got to be. He got to be. He got to be. be some third, fourth cousin. He got to be. He got to be. he's playing. Well, he's playing. <laughs> and I mean, the thing is, you know, we got, I wonder we always say on the green grind. You got to win on all three sides of the ball. Yeah. When you got a guy on special teams, on kickoff, that you go back to what you used to say back in the day with Nash Sutra. Do your job. Just do your job. That's what he do. Yeah. He did his job. It's, I'm going down the field, I'm staying in my lane, and I'm looking for that person That's with it. the ball. But this is what I want to bring out against Northern Nash. DeAndre Nash had six touchdowns alone against that Northern Nash defense. That's huge. That's huge. That's real huge. If you're seventy-first, yeah, first, you're saying we may got some. Yeah. Because I don't know that many teams that can do that to that nice defense. No. I see yeah. that defense lock people down and shut them down. So that's something big right there going to this game. DeAndre Nash, 7-7, seven 112 yards throwing last week. 121 yards rushing. Franklin, 170 yards rushing. Fred's 81. Xavier Hill, 88 yards receiving. I mean, this team is all over. Caden Lucas, T and Tavern. But I want to look at who they played and how they got here yeah. when we get ready to get to our next game. They lost. They only have had two losses in three years. The first one came to James Rose in 21, 2022, 22 to 23. Last year against Northern Nash. Mm -hmm. Two losses in three years. This team focused. Richmond, Pine Forest, Hope County, Southview, Purnell, Sweat, Lumberton, Douglasburg, the rival, Cape Fear, the rival, Gray Creek, Jack Brick, undefeated season. Triton in the playoffs, Williams in the playoffs, Fike in the playoffs, Southern Elements in the playoffs, mm -hmm. Northern Nash in the playoffs. And I want to go back to these last four games. Williams, 40-20. Fike, the Golden Demons, 48-0. Southern Elements, 32-27. Northern Nash, 50-36. Now, I want you to listen to these last four teams of people they have played for them to get to the playoffs right. who said the first beat. Williams beat Hunt in the playoffs in Southern Durham. They were 9 to 3. That's a good program. That's a good team. Fight beat South Johnson, CBA Cup, Hunt. They are one half of the Quad City Conference champs. 9 to 4. They shut them out. Mm -hmm. Southern Alamance. A good beat Southern Alamance. A good Southern Alamance team yeah. that we saw play. Yeah. Southern Nash, Williams, East Alamance, West Alamance, Jacksonville, Terry Seven. They were 12 and 2. Seven first beat them. Northern Nash last week. They beat Hunt, Fight, Chase Rose, Nash Central. They made it to the fourth round of the playoffs of yep. two way football. The Greek and Grind Franklin County Chance Franklin. <laughs> Rocky Mountain, they're a rival. Southern Nash in the playoffs at their house rival. Scotland in their house on the road. Have about the one seat on the road. Seven first beat them. I mean, it goes back. I, I don't know what I don't know what Coach Millard has told you yeah. guys. But they are focused. Yeah, I'm gonna say they, they are just are focused, totally focused. They're yeah. focused. I gotta pick on this game. I mean, 71st is coming in in the playoffs state championship. Yeah. They're two over one when they had a time a long time ago. I gotta pick on this game, but it's gonna be a good three. Yeah, definitely a good thing.
All right, y'all. Two A. Two A football. I like that two A football. Two A football. Fifteen and old Clinton Dark Horses versus the fourteen and one Reesville Rams. I'm not going first. I got these. I'm going first. Dark Horses. I said last week it's time to take that ride, but not the last ride. Time to take a ride to the state championship. And that's what we did, dog horses. We took a ride from Clinton, North Carolina, down to Raleigh for a state <laughs> championship game at Carterfield State. That's what we did. Clinton, I mean, you know, we've been talking about Clinton since they became a board of the Greek Grind. Yep. Just good team. Good program. I mean, Clinton has went five and five. This is the 11th period of the state championship. They're yep. five and five. I mean, but going into the state championship, clearly they had to be Northside Jacksonville. Wallace Road, see, I put a star by that game. Mm -hmm. Lumberton, 4A school, Whiteville. Princeton, another one I put a star by, 40-14. West Blanding. But then when you get in conference play, Red Springs, West Blanding, Midway, St. Paul's, Fairmont. And you know, a lot of people look at the non conference where they play, beat the Wallace Rose Hill, and they beat the Princeton. Mm -hmm. You know, and then in their conference, they had some good teams in their right. conference. But a lot of people say, how would this team match up against the field against the East. Right. When you know plows you get it, plows you get whoever we That's, That's right. It. Survival mode. They got kids in the first round of plows. No knock on the Vikings. Yeah. Well, when we think of kids, basketball school. That's what you're saying. That's more basketball. Basketball school. Yeah. They got the first round, 64 12. No knock on the Vikings. Hey, you, you got your plows. Good season. But after that, I want you to listen to Bob Clean. This is when they had to play the field. When they mentioned the field, they had to play the field. Mm -hmm. Better field. 56 15. I said Ben Field will be able to go in there and make it a game. Clinton just went in there and just jumped on top of it. Southeast Alamex, 42 7. Then the toughest test Clinton could ever have. They had a team right down the street yeah. come up to Clinton. Had to play the bulldog. Had to play the bulldog. Guess what they yeah. said? We're going to hit you with everything we got. Yeah. And when we hit you with everything we got, we're going to go in the bus, get another box, and hit you with everything <laughs> got in that box. And that's what they did. But Clinton found a way to. Rise against adversity and beat Nash Central 55 32. And to me, that besides the Princeton, Bettyfield, Wallace Rose Hill wins, that was the biggest win of their record. Yeah, that was the toughest. I would say that was the toughest win for them. Then they had Northeast for yeah. Eastern Reception. Mm -hmm. 200 feet of teams. A good Northeastern team. Yep. Came into Clinton. Clinton beat them 36 22. Coach Corey got these guys. They're focused. You said it. They're focused. They're focused. Out of these four playoff teams, before I turn over to you, Daryl. I want to call out some of these teams that they beat record. Bettyfield, 75. Mm -hmm. South East Alamance, 85. Nash Central, 11 3. 2 A Big East Champs. Northeastern, 14 1. St. Paul, 6 5. Midway, 7 4. Princeton, 9 4. Whiteville, 11 3. Whiteville, 13 went to South East, Southwest Edge, come the third round, yeah. and beat them in that house. Wallace Rose Hill, 8 4. I mean, it starts with Morris Williams, Josiah Robinson, and he's the game changer. No, he's the game changer. Mm -hmm. This right here, you got Blackwell at the quarterback who can throw and run. This right here is a good dark horse team. They're well yeah. balanced. They got a tough game. Yeah. I am not going to say this is not a tough game. This they is got. a tough this game. This is a tough game. Because they're playing Reesville Rams out of Reesville, North Carolina. And they're, Reesville's coming in 14 and 1, 6 and 0 in the conference. That's good. That means that's conference. good. This team was in the state championship last year. They lost in the state championship to East Duplin 24-21. And the only loss they've gotten this year was against Eastern Alamance, 1914. And that's a good program. And that's a good program down that way. For them to get here in the playoffs, they played Madison, 158-0. West Stokes, 42-7. Uh, Revard, 41-20. Uh, Bunker Hill, 41-26. And last week, a good Shelby team. Good Shelby team. That they want to beat in 49-14. And this team is returning a lot of players from last year that made it to that championship. And it starts with their quarterback, number 14, Al Lee. Over 3,500 yards passing. 47 TDs. Western Carolina football at his finest. At his finest. He's got number four Cobb at running back. He's got over 1,000 yards rushing. And he's got some good receivers and number, I'm going to start off with Harrison, number zero. He's got over 800 yards. Then you got Flip, Flippin', but they call him Flip, <laughs> number, number one. He's a tall wide receiver that can get down the field, and it makes it easy for Lee just to throw the ball down there, and Flippin's going to go get it. He can stretch it. He can stretch the field. And then number eight, Jones, 
1,100 yards receiving this season. West Carolina. He's got some weapons on that offense. And then defense-wise, it goes right back to number three, Sharp, number five, Wilderman, number seven, Rose, and number 11, um, Mansfield. That defense, again, has just been playing. Ever since they lost to that East Alamance game, they've been playing lights out. A good Reesville Rams team that's been there, that's done that, and having a second opportunity to say, you know what, we got a second chance to be that's, back in the championship. That's game. the key word. And are, and we're going to take care of business. Are we going to take care of business? Right, because, because when you get back, it's kind of like how Northern Nashville this season. Yeah. If you can get back, if you got there last year, you yeah. lost, and you can get back there, you don't want to feel that feeling you right. had last year. Yeah. You saw that team celebrate doing backflips, high five, yeah. fans on their feet. Yep. And you had to sit there and watch that. And watch that. And so the Rams are saying, you know, we're here, we're back again. We're back again. And it's an opportunity for us to get this championship this year. So this is going to be a great game. This is it. Because you got two teams that want it. Both of them want it bad. You got to see the Clinton that want it. Yep. So but we got to pick on it. I got to pick on it. But we got to wait. I'm going to wait. All right. You said and the back, last one. You said back again. Well, they, back again. Well, they back again. Yep. <laughs> that was a perfect transition to this game. The one they put about the return, man. Oh, should we call it the grudge, man? Yeah, yeah. Because these two teams right here for the West Indies, they know sooner or later, if they keep winning, yeah. they're going to they meet up. They're going to meet up. And we've been seeing this in preseason. They've been on a crash course for each other. Yeah. 15 0 Mount Airy Granite Bears versus the 13 0 Tarboro Vikings for a winner taking home the 1 A state championship. That's it. You got the West. I got to let you go. For All one. right. So, like you said, the Mount Airy's Granite Bears coming into this game. Out of Mount Airy's, North Carolina, 15 and 0, 6 and 0 in the conference. Last year, that was 15 and 1, 6 and 0, won the state, won a championship against this team. Against Harvard. this team. <laughs> in the last two seasons, they've gone 30 and 1. Last time they lost was against East Siri, 14 to 12 last year. But they played these series early in the season and won 49-0. So that was a marquee game for me that they took care of. They took care of business. Again, playoff teams that they played, Union Academy won 55-3. They played Mitchell, won 42-0. Murphy, 64-26. Eastern Randolph, 42-21. And then last week, they played a good Reesville team. Oh, excuse me, Robinsonville. Robinsonville team. Black and, Knights. And won 27-16 in Robinsonville. He took Robinsonville. I took Mount Robinsonville in that Mount Airy. Hey, Mount Airy, I <laughs> took y'all. <laughs> but I got to say, this Mount Airy's team has only given up in 15 games 88 points. But have scored 788 points. Only given up 88 points. And scored how many? 788 <laughs> points. That means... So they've only given up, if you add it, divide it, calculate, move the one to the five, and all that, they've basically given up six points per game. Key players for them starts with their running game. Uh, Deshaun Martin, number four. Uh, he's got over 1,500 yards rushing, 17 TDs for the season. And then they got the returning senior. Six one, number five, running back, Tyler Mason. Over 2,000 yards rushing, 38 touchdowns for the season. He's quick. He's got great vision. He's hard to tackle. But you got to get up to that offensive line. That's a key word. The offensive line. This is some of the same players from last year on this offensive line that won the state championship. And it starts with number 65, Landon Cox. Then you number 50, D. Dawkins. Number 54, Hayden Bender. Number last. 51, Spencer Bladen. And number 59, Tyler Grant. Those guys are the hogs on that line. They do the work. And it, it goes back to what we talked about Southern Alamance, how that offensive line just sticks like glue like and puts you in the ground. Elmer's glue. This, this offensive line does the same thing. And it starts up front, <laughs> and this offensive line knows how to push you and open up the holes for their running backs to get the um, runs that they're getting. Offensive, uh, Defensive-wise, you got George, you got Dandy, you got uh, Gilmore, um, those are some of the guys I saw on defense. Again, Mount Airs is Mount Airs. That's it's a it. good team. It's a good this team. This is a good team who's coming back into the game <coughs> on Saturday looking to get another state championship. Look at that at number two Trump games. At number one. So but they got a chance. They, they got a chance. They got a chance. Yeah. They got 
18 Day has done everything right, right. since they lost that game last year, 27. First of all, this is the Tarboro Vikings. 14th appearance in the state championship. That right there deserves a hand clap. Yeah. Because yeah. that means that you are doing something right. It doesn't matter what kids you get or how much talent. That's not talent. Yeah. That's coaching, being able to teach these guys right. your system and they learn it, accepting it, and playing it. Tarboro has not won their state championship game since 2021. The 85 state championship game. For 14 periods, that's just pretty good. That's that's great. I mean, it's a streak of pure dominance in the East with Tarboro. And I'm just talking about East when I talk about Tarboro. They, I call them the gatekeeper of the one day football leagues for a reason. Because for 18 some years, they have held the keys to the game. Yeah. And they won't let you in. Right. I don't care who you are. They have beat some of the best 1A programs to get here in the past. The North Hamptons, the Rosewoods, those schools. Yeah. Good schools. There was plenty of times Jimmy Gates County went in. Yeah. They couldn't get in. So this team has been the gatekeeper. But they have beat teams this year to get here. Rocky Mount. Herford County. We saw that Herford County. Yeah, we saw Herford County. Take it put yeah. up some points. Yeah, definitely can put up some points. Their rival North Edge Cone, 62 seats. Their rival Southwest Edge Cone, 35 20, which that was the first day to judge it. Yeah. Big game. Mm -hmm. They were down at halftime in Southwest. And found a way to come back. Talk about football in the spot. Yep. Bird team, playoff team, 49 6. For Queens, Martin County, the current Gates County, Washington County. North Ham. Now, this is what sticks out to me in this team. I talked about it last week. I'm going to say it again. They beat the North Ham and Jaguars. And we are big fans of North Ham and Jaguars yeah, yeah. high school on this show. 48-0 in the playoffs. They beat the runner-up to the Toronto Conference Championship. The Southeast Hollow Pass Trojans, who had a great season. Yeah. Only loss was between was from last year to week one and the last week, week 10, Wilson Brown for the South Toronto Conference Championship. They beat them 36-0. East Bland came in up. Yeah. Good team. Yeah. Running back, 2013. Then the hardest test, West Columbia. Could they stop that quarterback? Could they yeah. stop that running back? That was back? it. He was Four, doing three quarterbacks. 49-12. Took care of business. They have only allowed 91 points in 14 games. Woo. And we ain't got to go through all these people. Same people. McDowell Moore, Caden Everett, Mason Sutterfield, Cameron McDowell Moore. You got Gunner, Cole Cradock, Coach Cradock's son, I believe. Kevin Bridges, this team's coached by Coach Jeff Cradock. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow has been there 14 times. They have won this game eight times. Last year, just one of the year for them, my area to me was the better team. Yeah, definitely. This Tomorrow team has done everything right to get back here. I got a pick on this game. Uh oh. I got a pick on All right. With that being so, said, let's let's don't hold up. Let's get let's, let's go, go on to give five minutes. Give people what they want. Four A football. We're gonna start with four A. We're just gonna jump right. We ain't going one two three four, and we ain't going well. Yeah, we all going about four three two one. Yeah. <laughs> four A football. Seven p.m. Carter Finley Stadium up there in Raleigh. Fourteen and one Hogard versus thirteen and two Weddington Warriors. Oh, yeah, let's talk about both teams. We talked about both teams. I'm gonna pick the Warriors in this game. I'm going Warriors. I'm going Warriors. I think the Warriors knew last year they had a chance one point away from getting that to the state championship. And now they're there. And now they're there and they got that opportunity. And I think with the quarterback play, wide receivers and Jackson and their defense, and they've played some good teams. I mean, you played a good independence team. Mm -hmm. um, I think they've been battle tested, so I'm going with the Warriors on this. I'm going to hold on Vikings. Oh. You had to go to Cleveland. You lost against them in your house week one. Okay. You had to go to Cleveland round three of the playoffs and beat them in the house. You were able to do that. Then you had to get to this game. You had to go to Cardinal Gibbons, which a lot of people said. Yeah. Cardinal Gibbons could have just, a lot of people said Friday night. Last Friday, this was a, not a cakewalk, but mm -hmm. an easy trip for Cardinal Gibbons to get back to a point in championship. But this whole ball team is uh -uh. It's our time. Our time now. Okay. I'm going to hold on. Right. 3A football, that will be played on Friday night at 7 p.m. at UNC. Keenan Finley Stadium, is that Yeah, Keenan. Yeah, Keenan. Yeah, that's I, it. I don't know the name of that stadium. <laughs> 15 0 Falcons are 71st taking the ride from Fayetteville to play the 15 0 Hebrew Red Tornado. Good game right here. I think it's going to be a good game. Good game. Really good game. Who can cut back on the mistakes? Yeah, that's and what I'm going to say. Play the best. 
football game they ever played and on Friday. It's gonna come down to special teams That's and field brother. position. But I think that I'm going for him. I'm going. I'm going seventy first. I'm going seventy first on this. I think they got enough firepower. On offense, they can weather the storm. They can weather the storm, and that special teams is good. I think Coach Joe from Hickory Red Toy knows he's seventy first with everything they got yeah. that first quarter. Yeah, but it goes back like you said. We seen this team yeah. get hit by Northern Edge in that first quarter, and they weathered the storm. And that's it. And they got five five. Well, I can't pick so, against them. I got seventy. I got seventy first on this one as well. Two A football right. Saturday at three p.m. at Carter Finley Stadium up there in Raleigh. The 14 and 1 Rams of Reesville versus the 15 0 Clinton Dark Horses. Woo, good this football. Is, good football. This is going to be a tough pick. Two of them. Well, really, we done had three good games, right? Yeah. Three good games because the Rams are a great team, great quarterback, good running back. But Clint, they got Coach Corey's Dark Horses. Yes, yeah, but they got Clinton coming in. And I don't see the Clinton coming. But I think if Clinton can control, put pressure on the quarterback. That's key word. They got to play they like got to me. They put pressure. You cannot let Lee sit, stand back there in the pocket, and throw the ball all day long. They got to have that defense I saw in the second half of that Nash Central team. Yeah. That Nash Central game. When yeah, they, they was coming yeah. out of the Nash Central. Yeah. And they were tightening up those ends. Yes. If you can put pressure on the quarterback and, and make him rush his throws, you will have a chance. And then control the run. And then your corners just play tight man-to-man -man defense on their wide receiver. And we so, saw that in second half. Yeah, definitely, because if, if you get Flip, number one, Hyde, Jones, if they start catching the ball and getting into a rhythm, it's going to be a long day. But if you can start putting pressure on the quarterback from the start, not wait till the second half. You got to do this first quarter. Yeah, you got to come in. You got to let them know, hey, we're here to play. And we want to stay championship. Yeah, so if you could do that, I'm going clean. I'm going Clinton on this. It's going to be close, though. This is going to be the best. It's going to be close. Game. I think out of all the games, this will be the one that's decided by either one point or a field goal. Yeah, definitely. From a two-point conversion. Yeah. I'm taking Clinton on this one, but Clinton's got to play a perfect game. This is not a bad Yeah. I watched Reesville today. Yeah. They are not a bad team. Not a bad team. So it's got to be a perfect game for Clinton to win this game. one day yeah. football at Ooh. noon. And that is at Keenan Finley Stadium. The Mount Airy Granite Bears 15 and 0 taking the ride from Mount Airy to play the 13 and 0 Tarboro Vikings. Sean, I might just go uh -oh. say it. <laughs> Last year, we talked about this team. Last year, well, we, I made, made, some picks. Comments. I made, some we comments. made some picks on this game last year. And I made a comment that I won't necessarily hear. Yeah. They told me after that yeah. game last year, we don't want to never hear yeah. those two words again. And they don't you say those two words today. I, <laughs> For the first time ever on the Great and Grind with the five minute quick pick. I can't make one of these. I time. am not being able to make a pick on this These game. two teams are both good on both sides yeah. of the ball. Nobody. Me and Daryl talked about this game since we knew in preseason they were going to yeah. play each other. Yeah. And we've been watching both these teams. They are so much similar. Yeah. There's not that much. It's you not, know, we can look at some of these games and find an advantage. Right. If this team wins on special team, right. they can steal this. One. Right. If this team can lock down a different a, a yeah. person on wide receiver or running back, yeah. they can win this one. Both these teams play just alike. Just alike. And... We're not going to be able to make a pick on this game. Make the best, best team, team win. win. That's why I'm saying. Make the best team win. Best team that's, win. That's the best we can give y'all on this show. And I'm sorry, Mr. Producer. That's what we, we, can't, we, make we, we can't make. We can't make no pick on this I one. I can't. Can't do it. Make the best team win. And whoever we'll win, guess what? We'll be coming to see you. <laughs> we come to see you. Clint, we come to see you. Eric, whoever wins these games, yeah. Great Ground come to see we you. We're going to find a way to get down, though. All right. All right. Well, Daryl, we only got one more show after this. Yep, and that is our famous senior show. Our senior show. That'll be coming up next week when we'll be doing our senior show. We'll be at the state championship games. Yep. Look for us. Clinton will be, I think we're going to 2 8 Yeah, we're going to we'll try to get to the 3 8 one on Friday yep. night. We're working on some details on that. 4 8 we didn't forget about you, but it's at 7 p.m. And Tarboro, we wanted to be there for Tarboro and yep. Miami. We had that highlight to be there. Yep. But it's just too much hard. It's going to be difficult for us to try to get to Chapel Hill to Raleigh. Right. But we will definitely be talking about that Tarboro game. Definitely. And the Clinton one. Yeah, definitely. Talk on about our post-show. On the post-show. Yep. 
So as I wait there before we sign off, do you have the drink? And do you have grinded? How can they watch us, you know? They can watch us on Channel 19 right here in the Dash County area and on Studio 67, NCC on YouTube. And Darrell, tell them about how they can watch the post-game show and pre-shows for this season's state championship game and for future seasons on Grit and Grind. Uh, you can go to Instagram. It's under Grit and Grind Podcast NC. Just do a search for that and you'll find all our content videos, our pre-shows, post-shows, and all of that. So again, Sean, do you have the grit? And do you have the grind? And Daryl will be putting out information for what time we'll be going live on Saturday yeah. on Instagram. So make sure you follow that Instagram to get that information. And we will see you Friday night and all day Saturday because yeah. a champion will be crowned in the state of North Carolina in high school football.